Hello everyone, welcome back to our interesting course on breast cancer clinical pathways. Today we'll be reviewing a summary of the slides relating to the topic called nursing care of breast cancer patients. This presentation was prepared by Mrs. Akaniele Nsikak Godfrey. She's an oncology nurse at the University of New York teaching hospital in the private state of Nigeria. Today's discussion, we hope that by the end of what we're talking about in this on this webcast and in the slides that you'll get as handouts, you'll be able to understand the role of nurses in cancer prevention and diagnosis. She also be able to explain what nurses do before and after surgery. We hope that participants will understand what nurses do regarding discharge of patients and also you should be able to appreciate some common side effects of chemotherapy and what nurses can do to relieve those. And the issue of survivorship is one of the things we'll be looking into in this course and we hope that you will be able to get to some insights on what to do regarding that. There is this beautiful set of slides called 18 steps to prevent lipedema, which is lipedema is one of the complications of uh, breast cancer surgery. So, we really think that it should be on board with that and to know what the signs are. Then, finally, we, we, we touched on the side effects of radiation therapy, and hopefully, we pick up some cues on that as well. So, we all know that nurses are the heart of clinical care. They do a lot to support the recovery of patients and to, and to connect with other professionals like doctors and lab scientists and all that. So nurses have a huge role. One as a practice partner, they support both inpatient and outpatient management. They also do a lot of administrative work, you know, nurses ensure that we keep proper records and documentations for each patient. I can't imagine myself as a physician working without nurses. That would just be unthinkable. So nurses are, apart from all the clinical roles, nurses have a huge role to play in research. Nurses can lead research, design their own studies, or work with other people, and role patients. So the list is endless. And that is we think that this course is it's very important that we all learn together as physicians, nurses and radiation therapists. So regarding breast cancer, many of us understand that breast cancer patients face a lot of problems. They have issues with immunosuppression. Because of the cancer and its treatment, they have bleeding tendencies and they, don't, they also have issues with body image because of, um, for instance, mastectomy would change how a woman's body appears. And essentially, nurse, uh, cancer changes a lot of things in patients. So the need, there's a need for the nurse to prepare the patient mentally and to kind of help uh, improve the patient's mental, mental stability before the patient even goes to surgery or before they put chemotherapy. So that's one of the roles of nurses. So during cancer treatment, a lot of patients have uh, come to the nurse, and the nurse needs to be able to deliver. So the first thing you get to do as a nurse is to do an assessment for the patient. So in the patient's assessment, the nurse will get to ex examine the patient's physical and emotional status, and this will this will take in, this will involve taking in some present medical history and also including some past medical history. And you should also if, help the patients understand what problem the disease is and its treatment. So you can find out how much they know and fill in the gap. And you should also be aware that some of the results that patients might be getting from the lab or from other investigations, are, my, my doctor is not to fully properly to them just due to the fact that nurses have very little communication with my doctors. 
So nurses should be aware of this and also be well well enlightened to be able to explain to the best of their ability what the results might mean. But also they should remember to work in consonance with the doctors and other health providers to ensure that the message they are giving to the patients is the best for them and for the best interpretation. Now, there are lots of slides in the, in the course talking about the rules of nurses in, in general patients counseling. So the next set of slides are focused on the role of nurses before surgery. So for instance, the patient has been diagnosed with a breast lump, is scheduled for surgery. What should the nurse do before the patient goes in? I'm sure many of you are doing this, but it's just important to touch it again. So first, the nurse has to explain the treatment options in a way that the client can understand. And then you should also encourage discussion with the patients regarding what are the potential physical and emotional changes that they experience after the treatment. And try to understand the patient's values and their beliefs in relation to, the, to, to surgery. It will, be, it will be very, very helpful if you as a nurse can facilitate the patient's involvement in in decision making for treatments. So for instance, what we call patient centered care. In this case, what it could be like, well Mrs. Mrs. X, I understand that you're gonna have you're going to have this breast surgery and, and it's on the right. Do you have any concerns regarding do you have any concerns regarding where you want to talk to her to put your IV line, do you prefer it on the wrist or the elbow, you know, that kind of thing. Just get the patients involved. Nothing, all of this might apply to your patients. And so, after surgery, like I said, there are a lot of slides uh, discussing what the nurses can do before surgery. But after surgery, one of the most important things uh, is lymphedema. And that happens because the, uh, the depletion of the axilla uh, for, from the breast cancer affects the, lymph the lymphatics. So it's important that you, that you help the patients to prevent lymphedema by promoting good venous and lymphatic drainage. So the, one, of the, uh, one of the things the nurses can do in this case would be to elevate the arm with a higher pillow, making the patient comfortable as well. So for instance, having people behind a pillow, which is in the, next to higher of the heart, and the lymph can, can drain better. And then you can also place a sign on the bed of the patient that nobody should take blood pressure readings on the hand or the side where the surgery was done. You know, no blood should be drawn from that arm. It, 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 this might look like it's a no brainer, but you, but you, but you, if you look at the data to find out how many times people have made the error of trying to check blood pressure or drain blood from the arm where the patient has surgery, you wouldn't believe it. So these are simple things that nurses can do, and of course, there's patient, patient monitoring, the like wound and uh, vital signs, and all of that stuff. So what about chemotherapy? You know, you know cancer is treated by surgery, chemotherapy, radiation therapy, immunotherapy. So we look. So the next set of slides are looking at the role of nurses during chemotherapy. It's uh, one thing is that you need to be aware of the side effects of the drugs the patient is taking. For instance, a patient might be taking cyclophosphamide, cyclophosphamide, or dofurubicin, or five of you might be might be exposed to having uh, erythematitis. So knowing this will help you account to the patient on oral hygiene. And so this is just an example, okay? So what do what do they need to do for oral hygiene? Like frequent oral rinses with saline gargles, tap water. And you know, soft brushes so they don't get to hurt itself. The the, the uh, around because like a bit fragile at that stage. Then the other thing is around food. It's been advised that you should avoid hot, acidic, and crunchy food, and to rinse them out before and after eating. These are just some of the simple things that nurses can do after doing uh, chemo. And then there are other things that they can do. For instance. Some drugs used in treating cancer, such as fusplatin, vincristine, causes fatigue. So nurses can encourage patients to help with, uh, prevent fatigue. And what can they do in this case? Counseling. Tell the patient, well, this drug can make you a little bit tired. 
so it will be important that you try to take a lot of rests and do some light exercises and just don't do too much get people to help you do a few things these are some of the things uh, interventions that can be used in that situation then um, not all the cancer patients will start we all know that with implementing treatment people get to survive so not as have a role to play but for people who have survived cancer and this includes surveillance for the cancer spreading or for a new cancer or things like that and also you should also survey uh, kind of keep an eye on the patient's psychosocial uh, health like what's their mental health like are they feeling depressed are they anxious some of the issues that they might have would also include um so i'm making a mess here uh would also include um So some of the issues will include fatigue, memory issues, and sexual health issues. Nurse, nursing assessments continues in survivorship. So things like physical, emotional, and social assessments have become very necessary for them and for them to care. And then finally, in treatment, in uh, radiation, people who have radiation face a lot of side effects as well. For instance, skin reaction. There's some beautiful slides talking about this. And there is we've talked about oral phenotyping before, and then there is fatigue as well. So there are flights explaining what the nurses can do in each of these cases, and and not more. So I encourage you to go through the slides and ask questions in the discussion groups. But in conclusion of this uh, segment, we get to emphasize that nurses have important roles to play in cancer prevention, screening and diagnosis, as well as survivorship. And nursing is a help of healthcare, but it's important that we all have adopted a team approach, which is working with doctors and other people in the healthcare system. Thank you very much for working on this slide, and we'll see you in the next one.